Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the show. This is episode three of our T3485 in Berlin, our project that we've been working on. The first two episodes, of course, we focus right on to the T34 itself during construction and then painting and weathering. Well, in this episode, we start working on some of what will be the diorama elements. And in this episode, we'll focus exclusively on this little Bronco saloon car. Well, we'll do a little bit of destruction, and then we'll do the painting and weathering to make it look like, well, I guess, a destroyed, burnt-out vehicle. So let's get started. These photos show some of the inspiration for the scene as a whole, but in particular, these photographs show these little cars, the civilian vehicles, just destroyed, tossed around, used as roadblocks, and such like that. And so that's one of the elements that I want to incorporate on the scene that I'll be placing my T-34 on. So when we get to the diorama, this will be part of that scene. So here we go with these fancy unboxing, and we have a fairly large box from Bronco here that's a little bit harder to open than it should be. And then inside we find, what do we find? Uh, we don't find a lot because we got a very small car in a very big giant box. Well, let's flip through the instructions here very quickly. Let's see what we have in front of us. Really, it's a fairly straightforward, simple build. Not a lot of steps here, not a lot of parts, as you can imagine. A few areas, I see that the tires are a separate piece, which is good because I'll be leaving those off. And let's see what else here. Yeah, those car seats are going to have to do something different with those two just to kind of replicate the burnt out effect, make it a little bit more convincing. And of course, some nice color references, which, well, we'll kind of ignore those for the time being. Well, construction. Well, no surprise here. It goes forward pretty quickly here. There's not a lot of parts and there's not a lot of steps. So let's focus on a few of the different conversions I did just to make this a little bit more convincing of a burnt out vehicle. The first being the front seat. Of course, that's upholstered. If there had been a flame or a fire within this car, well, that would have been one of the first things to go. And what would remain is just the framework, the metal framework of the seat itself. So in order to do this, I just use a little bit of the brass wire and I use the car seat, the plastic car seat, and just kind of wrap it around the exterior of the car seat. And that just gives me a, the general shape and size of this, what this framework needs to be. This is not precise at all. There's no real measurements here. It's, it's as you'll see, it gets a little bit wonky, but it's mostly just to look busy. And that's, that's all I'm really looking for. So little, little peaks inside the car, you'll just see a little bit of, I, you know, like I said, a little bit of destruction in there. And in keeping with the theme of making it look just busy, make some springs for the seat. And that's just a little bit of wire that I'm wrapping around a piece of plastic tube. And then I'll cut those to some small lengths and then solder those onto the framework. And then just a little bit of a test fit here. Of course, this will have to be glued down in place once everything is ready to go. But that doesn't look so bad. You know, just some little peaks through the windows to show that off nicely. Well, the next thing I want to do is have a little bit of destruction, wear and tear on the vehicle. And there's a couple of ways of doing this, but I'm going to try first with a little bit of flame. Of course, this is the old fashioned way of doing it. And you have to be a little bit careful here because you don't want to melt your plastic. You just want to soften the plastic. So I use a, a lighter from the underside and just soften the plastic slightly. And then I'm using the cotton buds because I've learned from experience that it's, it's easy to leave your fingerprints um, and into the surface permanently. So I don't want to do that. So just this soft cotton swab, just kind of crushing things in a bit. And I want to be careful that it looks that it looks like bent metal versus melted plastic. So it's a careful dance between just enough heat to get it to soften the plastic so you can make your little bit of manipulations and too much to where you just melt the plastic and it looks like a well melted plastic blob. But unfortunately, no matter how careful I am, there's still a few areas of the plastic that just look well, they look melted, not bent. And you know what that looks like. It looks a little globby and rolled over. But it's easy to take care of with just a little bit of scraping or maybe a little bit of sanding just to refine or redefine those little surface areas and sharpen up and crispen up the details. This little strut here along the window frame, that is one area that got melted way beyond repair. So I'll just go ahead and add, I'm just adding a little bit of aluminum foil right there and gives it a nice little bend and just replacing that section of of the structure. And then finally I want to add just a little bit more damage, a little bit more wrinkles and dents and dings along these fenders, and just a little bit of crimping, soft crimping. I'm not not trying to destroy these, I'm just kind of trying to bend them and add a little bit of uh, dents and stuff using a pair of flat pliers. 
Well, luckily we made it through that trial by fire, <laughs> the flames at least on the plastic, and now it's ready to start putting this car through a trial of fire and do the painting that will make it look more like a burnt out vehicle in the Battle of Berlin. Well, I'm gonna set up my paints, and while I do, I'd like just to take a moment just to point out a really nice website. Another YouTube modeler, Coldman's PL. This is run by my friend Lucas, and he does a great job on his site. A lot of really nice features in his videos, some nice book reviews, of course, some modeling projects where he takes takes on all sorts of different types of models and projects. And then even most recently, he uploaded a video tutorial for that was geared towards beginners. So head on over, I'll leave the description in the link below and hit his like and subscribe and perhaps join his Patreon and give him some support. Well, speaking of inspiration, here's a few photographs of burnt out vehicles. And as you can see, the colors, the level of damage, there, it comes in a wide range, which really gives us the opportunity to pretty much create anything that we want to create on our burnt out vehicles. This should be a lot of fun. So I began with the primer layer, and that was Mr. Surfacer 1200. That's my usual. And I'm coming back over the top of this with AK Gen 3. It's called Ash Gray. It's a really nice dark gray, almost a little bit of a brown tint to it. It's going to be perfect as basically the undertone color of this model. Once I have the gray color painted overall, then it's time to set up my palette for the burned colors. And these will range from basically an off-white all the way up to these bright reds and oranges. Well, as I prepared to get started with the painting, I thought, well, how am I going to create these these burnt effects and it really came down to I thought I thought a choice between either hairspray chipping or using the sponge method and of course you can see I used the sponge method there really is no right or wrong answer here it's just whatever you feel like doing or feel most comfortable with probably one of the more important things to remember if you do any type of sponge chipping is just to make sure there's just a very minimal amount of paint on the sponge itself and as you'll notice I'm constantly tapping off excess paint on the little paper towels. I began with the the lightest color, which I guess would be kind of more of that ashy color you see on a lot of burnt out vehicles. And that's in the broadest stroke. So the most of the vehicle gets covered with that. And then I'm coming back in with, in smaller areas, some of the more vivid or brighter um, burnt colors. And yeah, they're very vivid and, and bright at this stage. <laughs> and, and they kind of need to be because we're going to do a lot of toning down later on, but I want these colors to be able to show through. But yeah, it does look like some sort of a clown car at this stage of the game. That's for sure. Well, let's see if I could put this uh, back into a little bit more balance. So in the palette, I've got ash gray. I've added the ash gray color. That's the same color that I used in airbrushing the model. And back using the sponge, and this sponge has just, just the slightest amount of the ash gray onto it. And I'm just tapping over the surface and using that to help blend and unify those colors. In certain areas, I'll go a little bit heavier to bring it closer back to the original finish. And in other areas, I'll be very light over that and allow some of those nice oranges and, and yellows and such really start to shine through. My next step is to add a few light washes or filters onto this. And these are the acrylics that I've been using all along the same colors. And I've just really thinned them out with a lot of water so they're just must, nothing much more than say dirty water but these colors by adding just a little bit of filter over certain areas you could really draw out those underlying colors so even though we might have sponge paint, painted some ash gray say over some yellow or orange effects by adding just a little tinted water over the top it really draws those colors out and starts adding to some really nice visual effects of course, there's always that risk when using acrylic filters or washes like this that you will end up with those dreaded tide marks or those rings around the paints. And that's, that's always a risk. Luckily, there are a few pretty easy common sense techniques that almost eliminates that risk. First, pre-moisten the surface of the vehicle where you intend to do your, your filter. Secondly, work in small areas. So pre-moisten the surface, add a little bit of a filter in that area. And third, don't walk away. Keep an eye on that while it's drying and knock back any of those edges if they start to develop before they have a chance to dry. And then of course it would not be one of my projects if oil paints didn't come into the process at least at some point. On this little car, there's really not a lot of work with the oil paints. The acrylics and those acrylic filters have done a lot of the heavy lifting. I'm using the oils mostly to add a little bit of blending, enhancing some of the colors in certain areas. It does a great job, again, of pulling out some of those colors that are underneath, so those oranges and reds, and then just doing a little bit of profiling around some of the details just to bring a little bit of sharpness and 
crispness, crispness and definition to the, to the model. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to add this onto the model or not in the final, but at least I want to get it prepared and let's see how this goes. So I want to add some broken glass or shattered glass on the windscreen on this, on this car. And so what I've got here is some clean plastic wrap and I'm adding some white PVA glue onto the plastic wrap. Then I have these, they're basically crushed up little pieces of glass that I've gotten from the craft store. And then I'll take some of those and I'll sprinkle those over that little bit of white glue. And that will sit around and dry for a few hours. And then once it has dried, I have what is basically a clear film, the white glue dries clear, with all these little crystals embedded into it. And I could peel this off the plastic and I can basically kind of cut or tear it to shape and then glue it into the, the wind, window frame of the car. And then one last thing I want to take care of before I get too far along here is that front grille. It's looking a little nondescript and sad where the front radiator is. And I don't want to bring this to a high polish or anything like that because, of course, this car has been burnt out. But I do want to give it a little bit of definition. So I'm using the True Metal. It's a waxy paste. And this is the aluminum color. And just, just the lightest, lightest application, just a light dry brush is just bringing out some of that nice detail on that front and I think that's going to help it pop a little bit. Well let me remind you one more time that if you do like the content of this channel and haven't done so already please hit that like and subscribe button. It does help a quite a bit getting this channel out to more and more viewers and allows me to continue to make this type of content. For those of you who would like to support this channel even further I do have a Patreon page and the link for that is in the description below so I encourage you to go over and check that out. Patreon members enjoy early viewing of these videos numerous photographs of the ongoing projects, a little bit of peek into upcoming projects, and of course we have a message board that's always open and available for chatting and comments. Well, then that brings us to what's coming up next. And what's next? Well, the base. And here it is. I thought that this T34 would look great on some pink insulation foam. And then, let's see, what should we do with this little car? Yep, I think the burnt out car should go right about there. And then let's decorate the scene with, oh, I don't know, how about some tissue paper rubble? How's that sound? Yep, we are, we're good to go. Okay, scene is done. This concludes, no, just kidding. We'll start working on the base in full starting on the next episodes. And it's going to be quite an involved base project. And so I think it's going to be a lot of fun a lot of things to look at. So until the next time, thank you very much for watching this episode. Take care, guys, and happy modeling. See you next time.